My name is Dennis Jemphy and I'm 24 and I'm from Brixton, but well, originally from Ghana. I remember I was at home and some guy came and said, oh, your mum wants you to come to the United Kingdom. I was excited, I'm not gonna lie to you. I packed my bag the same day. <laughs> I was ready to go, you know, like that. Like, I was not wasting no time. But then it wasn't the case because when I came over here, I was living in those notorious estates in, in Brixton, which is Samalayton, Samalayton Estate. I grew up in a mix of the new generation of young people that didn't care, people that were, you know what I'm saying? We were pro crime, we loved the things that we, we did in the sense of like, you know, the criminal activities. I saw the older people, you know, carry weapons and hanging around them, I start seeing that around these young people were like selling drugs, doing this and doing that. And starts, you know, selling drugs myself. Started get, getting to know more people. That's when I became one of the MZ members. MZ is Murder Zone, the crew that we used to, I used to be a part of. Um, what made me get out of it was um, a young man by the name of Solomon, Solomon Smith, who runs the soup kitchen. He basically was part of a program called Exit, the Exit program, and he came to me about um, this program that's going on in the community and how I should get involved in it. And I thought, like, nah, man, that's not me. I'm not really a like program person, you know what I mean? Like, I'm all about getting get my money. Like, I ain't got time for this program stuff. And he said, no, nah, no, nah, just come have a go, come have a look. So I went one day and liked it and I liked the fact that my life was impacting other young people I was able to go to places and speak about the things that I've done and the things that I've been through to help others so I changed my lifestyle to do youth work and that's when I first met this guy called Simon and he found out that I was very interested in weapons and all of that stuff so he said why don't you do photography and I thought what about photography like what am I gonna do with a camera like <laughs> what kind of camera do it's like just like a gun you can aim and you can shoot like it was funny to me the way that he explained it because it's like you aim, you shoot and you reload. <laughs> it's like rah, that. it's like a gun. So I mean, when he gave me the camera and I started taking pictures for myself, I just basically started working with people that I was around. Like I was going into my friends' houses, not taking pictures of their, you know what I'm saying? Just showing basically the conditions that we live in. Because a lot of people say, oh, these young people, they're criminals, they're doing this and doing that. But you don't see the situation where the young person is coming from. Most of my friends hated it because I was like, why are you always walking with this camera, man? You're always taking pictures of me. You're always taking pictures of me. They hated it, but that's why I, just, I used to annoy them with it. You know what I mean? I just used to take a lot of pictures of my friends and things. It was 2010 and I was um, 20 years old. I had won the Spirit of London Award at that time as well. And um, I had these lumps growing around my neck and area. I had like a lump here, a lump under there, a lump here, a lump there. You know what I'm saying? Two lumps here and some of my grind area. GP said it was mumps. So he started giving me antibiotics. So I was thinking, cool, it's mumps, you know what I'm saying? Obviously mumps is a bad thing, but it can't be that bad. So, and then these symptoms are still not going. I went back to my GP and my GP referred me to St. George's. And when I went to St. George's, they cut a lump out, they tested it. And when they tested it, they came back to me and said, you got leukemia, which is um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, a form of cancer. I was shocked. I'm not gonna lie to you, I was shocked, but I didn't think it was the end of my life. For me, when the doctor told me, I wasn't emotional, you know what I'm saying, I took it like a man. But when I came home and I told my parents, especially my mother, that's when I became emotional because my mum became obviously emotional. Like, rah, what's going on, my son? No, no. <laughs> it's like, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. And um, yeah, I was put in hospital for like, a year mainly like I stayed in the hospital I know that I lived in the hospital for a year making me feel very weak and everything but photography kept me going because I used to like take pictures of some of the things that the doctors were doing to me <laughs> there were times doctors even tried to call the police on me because like I'm not saying that every patient should do this but I used to leave the hospital bed and go and do my work I don't take it in, into, into my conscience of what they're saying because once it enters your conscience, it just kills you, innit? It? it helped me get around my sickness because I had something to do. You know, doctors did say, like, I'm lucky if I saw today <laughs> that I'm seeing today. Yeah. 
so photography has basically opened my eyes because it's taught me that you don't look at something from one side my world was small my world was to be a gangster my world was to be you know what i'm saying a bad boy and run around as though i was some chicken head you know what i'm saying that was my world but photography has widened my horizons because i see things that people don't see sometimes i can sit there and look at someone's face and see that this person's going through something because Photography has alerted me to that. I can stand here and look at you, or I can stand here and look at you. It will be different, you know what I'm saying? There'll be difference in the lighting, the shade, there'll be difference in even the size that you are. When you come across people as well, just that the same way, you can't meet someone on a one-way street and be like, oh, this is how the person is. You see, so it's, it's brought me closer to understanding people. I work for myself running a small organization called Ensuance going to schools, teaching young people how to create magazines or films or photography, journalism. With this company, I believe that I can change a lot. I want to change the way young people perceive things. In the generation today, everybody is quick money. Everybody is money hungry. A lot of things that comes in life before money, but there's ways in which you can make money or there's ways in which you can do things without having to commit such a crime. 